it's time to see how well our mono green artisan deck full of werewolves is going to do against the standard play queue. It can't be worse than the zombie deck from yesterday. Here we go. Welcome back to Game School Dad with me, Martin, and I am looking at taking my mono green werewolf artisan deck to the standard play queue to see how well we can do. And just like with the other decks in this artisan series, we're going to see how well it does in its pure artisan form. And then at the end, I'm going to see what other rares or mythics I can add, even just a few to make it still a budget friendly deck, not too many rares, not too many mythics, but it might help make the deck work slightly better. So we have made some slight changes to the deck. In fact, the only one that comes to mind is the addition of Outland Liberator. I don't know how I forgot this in the original video, but yes, Outland Liberator is a great card to include because it's a werewolf and because it can destroy artifacts and enchantments, of which there are quite a few in the meta right now. So thank you for the comment uh, to include that. And yes, I should have done, obviously. So I've taken out, uh, what did I take out? I took out uh, one Howl of the Hunt, one Blanchwood Armor, one Bloody Breaker and one Wolfkin Outcast to make space for the four Outland Liberators. I think that was all the changes I made there. So I'm going to do 10 matches. You won't see all 10 of them because it'll take way too long, but you'll see the highlights and I'll go through how the 10 matches went at the end of this video when we'll go through all the upgrade options as well. So, right, let's get on with it. Game number one. Ooh, lots of pack song pops. Okay. Hmm. Who are we up against this time? Is it mono red again? It's not. Is it soldiers? Wow, okay. First time we've played soldiers with this deck. Hmm. Are they going to go too wide too fast? I'm okay with that now. They're pretty much just creatures. Apart from a few things. But I can use a tail swipe to get rid of Thalia if I want to. Probably other things I'd rather get rid of. Like that. Hmm. Lots of damage very quickly here. It's going to shrink the team down a little bit. Might give us a chance. Another land would be great. We can get Wolfkin Outcast out or two more packs on the pups. Hmm. Maybe the pups would be better. Hmm. Go back to the recruitment officer. Okay, we take six more damage. Hmm. Let's take it for now. Although they can do the whole Exile Valiant Veteran trick next turn if they have one more land. There's the other land. Okay, well let's go with... They're going wide, so we're going to have to go a little bit wider as well. Hopefully all these counters on Pack Song Pup will do something for us. But the soldier's deck's pretty strong no matter what you use, so. Okay, they've gone really wide. They need one land, and they can probably do it. It's not land, but Brutal Cathar's pretty bad. Hmm, I have to sacrifice everything. Okay, so we're still taking two, three, four, five. We can kill, doesn't matter what we kill. Kind of want to kill the frontliner, but I know it can come back, so it doesn't make much difference. Hmm.
Tail swipe is nice. Um, we need to get Pat Song Pup to get another one back. And then I suppose I'll play the Outland Liberator. I need another blocker. Now there's a chance that I can. Hmm, well, no, because if I get out the uh, Frontliner again. So I have to pretty much lose things to survive. Hmm. This is going to be close. If I can hold off this attack and kill some things. Oh, they're going to give Thalia the extra. Okay, well in that case, let's kill that. Let's take the damage there. And we can get out of Wolfkin in night time. Mm. No attacks, because we want to grow our team, block, and draw cards if they attack. Mm. Even if they exile the Valiant Veteran, they can only give get Thalia to be a 3-2, which isn't enough. So let's just put everything out. We're getting bigger every turn. They can get bigger once. Hmm. We might have something here. Okay, they have something. Hmm. Should we get rid of that? I don't really want to. I mean, I do want to, but... I want to draw a card. Tail swipe, perfect. Hmm, they've just realised what Wedding Crasher does. Now, let's go with... Getting rid of Thalia now. And they quit. So we beat some soldiers. That's pretty cool. Hmm, okay. Keep this. This is the first time in all the matches I've actually drawn Audacity. Oh, it's a mono red. You don't want to know how many times I've played mono red using this deck. I wonder if, because mono reds are pretty low level, low power level deck, it's um, full of commons and uncommons. I wonder if that gets matched up with us a lot on purpose. And lots. So let's go with Pack Song Pop and I think I want to it now. Hmm. I'm gonna save it. See what they do. Impulse. So I can kill the Swiss Spear now, anyway. Hmm, okay. Give it a menace, but it's treasure. Hmm. I kind of want it to turn to night time. Or I could just put out a big wolf. Don't really want to attack those ones. Maybe I'll put some pressure on them. I'm guessing he doesn't have any other lands. Well, he probably needs any other lands. That means everything else in his hands. Probably a spell. He has another swift spirits coming out now. Hmm. I think there's warfare. Okay. 
So they can kill us, but I think I'd rather kill them. Well... No, I think I'm actually gonna let them do the damage. Equal to its power, so let's go with... Mm, let's let it go to night time. Safekeeping to keep me alive. Hopefully. So we're taking five damage from there, two damage from there. Or we can block Bloodthirsty, in which case we're taking two, three, four, five, six, seven damage anyway, but I can gain two life. Mm. Or you need to play with fire. Do I actually just survive this? Does he have a play with fire? A lightning strike? Of course he does. <laughs> well, it was looking good. Let's kill that. Oh wait. Oh, I could have killed that. Hmm. One, two, three. Would that have saved me? I didn't even think about killing the mechanized warfare with the wolf. Hmm. Maybe I should have done that. Will we fight Mono Red again? No. Hmm, interesting. Something that isn't Mono Red. Ooh, soldiers? Not soldiers? It's not a soldier. Hmm. It's when it dies. They want it to die. I don't mind if it dies. <laughs> okay. But they have a trick on the other one. But I have a trick on this one too. Like their power stones, okay. It's an artifact, so if I let it go to night time, and if they don't cast two spells next turn, I can destroy their power stones every time I attack. Maybe that's good. Hmm. They're going to kill that. Well, then in that case, I'm going to kill that. They kill each other. <laughs> okay, never mind. So, three... Hmm... If I get a depopulate next turn, I'm going to be slightly upset. Oh, they're bringing it back. Okay. Take 
out the big one. I'll draw a card. Pup. Okay, so five. Could get the burly breaker out now. So I can do six damage with them as they are. Hmm. Maybe I'll keep the Burly Breaker, just in case. Oh, I didn't have enough to do both of them. Okay. Hmm. Expecting some kind of Teferi. Or Urza. It's an Urza deck, isn't it? All they care about is Power Stones and Might Stone. No, it's Calm. Hmm. Okay. Should have guessed by the avatar. We need power stone. Okay. They must have something because if they don't, they're gonna die. They must have something. What do they have? <laughs> okay. Well, let's still put some down to two. It's not looking too bad until they get Urza out. Going for the top card. It's a gamble. They're going to take the top card from their library and put it into their hand. Basically, just drawing one and bringing out Cityscape Leveler, of course. But that is still not going to be enough to win. So, they can destroy that if they attack. Hmm, okay, well in that case, there's no point attacking. So they can attack, they can destroy anything, but they don't seem to have a way of gaining life. So we might even beat the old mythic cityscape leveler. No, we won't. Haha! <laughs> Portal to Phyrexia, of course. Gain some life at least. Not that that's going to do much for us, because Cityscape level will kill a creature every turn. So the game is over. What other creatures do they have? Power Stones? So it's all. Oh, they must have Urza in there as well. You would, wouldn't you? You wouldn't not have Urza in this deck. Got all my creatures. Well, we were close. We were two hit points off. If they didn't draw a portal to Phyrexia, we would have had them. I think it's not too bad considering mythic, mythic, mythic. Rare. So I said this before in the zombie video, I'm going to say it again because it does make a big difference. When you are more experienced in terms of magic, when you have a longer history on your arena account, when you've played more games or won more games, of course Flesh Gorger, then you will get matched against people that have better decks than you if you're using Art Sand decks. Now I wouldn't recommend, why are they destroying that, not the other thing? strange. I wouldn't recommend using Artisan decks in the standard play queue normally at all. The reason why I'm making this as an Artisan deck is to 
show you that you can have a pretty effective deck, although it's not going to win every game against all these rares and mythics, but you can have a pretty effective deck even without rares and mythics. And when we get to the upgrading at the end, and we have a look at the few rares or mythics we could add to this deck to make it even better, then you'll have a deck that is pretty cheap to make and can do pretty well. Especially if you're a newer player, because you won't then be matched against people who have a better deck than you, basically. And it doesn't happen all the time. I'm not suggesting every single game is against double portal. <laughs> but um, I do have some games where I'm against kind of slightly different decks, decks you don't tend to see in the meta. You don't tend to see in ranked queues. But I also get occasionally decks like this where it's a bit crazy and you've got no chance at all. Alright, okay, let's go with this. We have Wolf on 1, Pax on Pup on 2. We're against Soldiers again. If we are, I would like to grow Pax on Pup. That worked last time. Mm. Mm, okay, they can do something. Reinforcements? Good, done it. Oh, we have blue. Yeah, it's looking too easy. Hmm. Something is up. Depopulate. That's what's up. Wait, hold on. We just draw four, drew four cards and gained some life. Okay, could be worse. Wow. Okay. It's still night time as well. Hmm. So okay, four or five, I could put that on there. Well let's get both of these out. Because I might be able to put armor on, tail swipe, and win next turn. Unless I depopulate again. Okay, might stone weak stone. Hey, I think I've won. Mm -hmm. So, six mana. Easy as that. Cool. That was a quick one. You know Portal to Phyrexia was coming next though, right? So we've done the 10 matches and we are back to have a look at the deck and see what we can do to improve and see how things went. So what worked well for us? Um, we did pretty good with Paxong Pup. It helped us defeat some soldiers. That worked really well. Outland Liberator was a definite include, which really helped us get rid of some other things in some matches. Blanchwood Armor won us, at least that last match, against the Mightstone and Weakstone. And Wolfkin Outcast definitely helped us with that as well, because we drew so many cards. And Burly Breaker definitely stopped a mono red or two um, game, because 8-7 when it's night time. Yeah, and mono red's not going to do much about that. So, okay, so we did pretty well. I think we won about five games out of the ten. So, not not terrible, considering some of the games we were against lots of rares and mythics. But we were also matched up against Mono Red, I think, about half the time. So, it might be because Mono Red has a similar power level. A lot of the cards in Mono Red are commons or uncommons. So, we did see that quite a lot. In fact, Kamano faces Karkasan became a bit of a problem, because... Some of our things happen when things die. So, Wedding Crasher, we draw a card. When a wolf or werewolf dies, if it's exiled, we don't draw a card. Pack Song Pup, if it dies, we gain life. If it's exiled, we don't. So, yeah, some things... Mm. So, facing against Mono Red with Kamano faces Kakasan definitely removes some of the nice triggers we have here. 
So that's a bit of a pain, especially if we're facing mono red a lot with this kind of deck. So maybe we need to have a bit more removal. Unfortunately, we didn't really get a chance to use Outland Liberator to kill Carcassonne when we needed to. But I think we did, we did okay overall. It's not the best. This isn't the best of the seven decks I'm looking at. The best is the last one, but um, it's a pretty good one. It's still pretty good. So considering, like I said, it's all Artisan, no rares, no Mythics. But what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at rares and Mythics that we could add into the deck. And we're going to keep it on theme. We're going to try and keep Wolves. We're going to keep Mono Green. We're going to see what else we can add, what other rares and Mythics we can add to make this deck even more powerful. So I'm going to do that now. And we are back after making some changes to the deck. So now we are not Artisan anymore, but we're still pretty budget friendly. I've gone for adding these four different cards, but a few copies of each. So that means we've got seven rares and two mythics that we can add to this deck. Obviously, if you don't have seven rares and two mythics, but you have at least just the rares or some rares and one or two mythics, you can still add one or two of these cards in if you can't add all of them. So let's go through what changes we've done. We've taken out the Snarling Wolf because it's a 1-1 one, one for one, and we can put out Ascendant Pack Leader instead. So Ascendant Pack Leader comes out as a 2-1, and you can put a plus one, plus one counter on it if you control a permanent with mana value four or greater, or if you cast a spell with mana value four or greater, you put another one on top. So anything that costs four or greater, well, we have these ones, cost at least four, and then we have still the Burly Breaker and the Wolfkin Outcast. So there's a good chance we'll have something else that costs four, which means it'll come out as a 3-2 later on in the game, which is not bad for one mana at all. And then we have Howl Pack Piper. It's a very good card against blue because it can't be countered. But also you can put any creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. If it's a wolf or werewolf, you can untap Howl Pack Piper, activate only as a sorcery. So depending on what you have in your hand, you can... Pay two, tap Halpak Piper, put the creature out, and maybe do it again on that turn. So let's say you have six mana on a turn. You could possibly put three wolves out onto the battlefield. It also doesn't technically cast the spells. And if you're not casting the creature spells, then you haven't cast a spell on your turn. It can turn to nighttime as well. So Halpak Piper is a nice fun card to get big creatures out and turn it to nighttime when you want to. You might see this used more often with cards like Titan of Industry because it's a really big creature that has a good ability when it enters the battlefield. But we're sticking with the wolf theme for now and I think it's pretty good still with cards like Averbrook Caretaker. Averbrook is hexproof. It's a 4-4 four, four for 6 mana and at the beginning of combat on your turn you put two plus one plus one counters on one other target creature that you control. So we might want to put counters on a Paxon Pup. We might want to put counters on something that's a big creature to start with. Maybe something with Trample. There's lots of options, but basically we can put, um, put plus one counters on whatever we like. And if we can make it turn to nighttime, it still has Hexproof when it becomes a Hollow Henge Huntmaster. But also it gives other permanents you control Hexproof. So everything on the board will have Hexproof. Everything on our side at least. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put two plus one plus one counters on each creature we control. So no matter how many creatures we have out, they can all get plus one plus one counters on them every turn. So we're going to grow our team huge, which is why we definitely still want Hound Tamer in the deck. Because we want to give everything trample if possible. And we also have Tovalar's Huntmaster here, which when it enters, we create two 2-2 two, two green wolf creatures and whenever it attacks at night time we can make two more 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens or we can pay four mana to have one wolf of ours fight another target creature we don't control. Obviously the benefit of getting the Huntsmaster out is we're going to expand our team, we're going to grow by two more wolves and we are going to potentially add plus one plus one counters on them every turn. So with these, with this team out here Halpak Piper, making sure we can get out Averbrook or and Huntsmaster, possibly on the same turn. Because if we're on turn four, we have four lands, put out Halpak Piper. Next turn, whether we draw a land or not, we could put out Averbrook if we have it in our hand and Tovalar's Huntmaster if we have it in our hand. And suddenly we have Hexproof, we have a 6-6 six, six, and two other 2-2s two and then turns to nighttime at the end of the turn. 
And then next turn, we're going to be putting two plus one plus one counters on everything we own. So a really great combination of cards to have at the end there. And we're sticking with the wolf theme as well. I've also added one extra land, which isn't very much, but one extra land means we're more likely to be able to get up to these bigger creatures a little bit quicker rather than getting stuck or maybe turn three or four with the land with no lands left in our hand. Okay, well, let me know what you think of this deck in the comments below, whether it's the artisan version or the slightly more expensive but still budget-friendly budget, budget -friendly version. Don't forget you can like this video and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on any future content from me. Thank you for watching to the end of this video and I will see you in the next one.